Well, good morning, and welcome back to Grey Shut Down. This is episode two in our morning coffee talk series, casual chats over a morning cup of brew. Allow me to get my drink going here. I hope you're well this morning. Things are good here in Dallas, Texas. It's a nice area. You guys commented about a few things last time that I think we should talk about today. We commented about, uh, it was commented about talking about Elon Musk today. I think that's going to be a very deep topic to cover. First off, it's the, uh, let's cover the technical details. I hope <clears throat> this doesn't get all over me. You guys ever have one of those water bottles where it's kind of difficult to open? That's this guy. All right. Create my ice bath first. Uh, back to the technical details. I hope you guys commented last time that the audio quality was lacking. I hope this time around that that is not the case and that the audio quality sounds great this time. <laughs> I think that most likely will be true. Trying a slightly different setup. This is my little mobile portable setup to kind of, you know, take with me as I go places. <clears throat> this segment is not sponsored, but I do use the out in espresso machine. The reason I use it is because it takes those Nespresso pods and <clears throat> You can put any kind of coffee you like in it, which is great. And the neat thing about it is that unlike some of the other machines, this unit actually does heat up the water, which is important. Some of these other small portable travel units, essentially you have to um, think about it. Essentially what you have to do is heat up the water separately, then pour it into the unit, and then you'd run it through. This one's not like that, which is cool. sip of water for myself here. Okay, <clears throat> on to the deep topics while that water is heating up and we're pulling a shot of espresso. Wow, this, this water bottle wants to fight me today. Interesting. Leave that lid off because obviously we'll pour the shot of espresso into there. <sighs> Coffee is a good thing in the morning. I think, honestly, more people should find what that is that they enjoy that starts their day off on the right foot. Coffee, for me, makes the morning more civilized and at least makes things seem like it starts off in a decent way. That being said, thoughts on Elon Musk. I haven't thought about this before actually filming myself, so these are going to be raw. I know there's people on both sides of this aisle. I know there's people that are really supportive of Musk, and I know there's people that are really uh, critical of him. I like to think that I fall somewhere in the middle. I have gone to both sides of that camp. <clears throat> I can see both sides of the argument, but I think the truth probably lies somewhere in the middle. There are some content items for me that frustrate me. One being the children or having kids situation. I think the manner in which that he had kids and raised his kids is completely different than what most average Americans can actually afford to do in their daily lives, which in some ways brings to my next point, which is that because of that, in my opinion, he does not have touch with what the average American or what the average citizen goes through. And I think that's kind of true. I think for those that make, forgive me, but I think if, if you're making over six figures a year, combined in a household, I think you start to lose touch at a certain point of 
what is, um, I think you start to lose touch at a certain point of what's actually going on and what the everyday average American is going through. Now that being said, <clears throat> I do think that there is still a conversation to be had about the humanitarian side of all of this. Um, I, I, we talk about Musk. Oops. Coffee is ready. Pardon me for just a second. I realize this video will go on for a couple of more minutes after I get my cup of coffee because I'm not done with my thoughts on this. And... Perfect. I'm sure there's somebody that's gonna cry in a coffee shop somewhere for me shaking my coffee, but they're not here to tell me no. <clears throat> I like it. I like how the shot of espresso actually just falls into the cup when you kind of gently do the swirl from the top. The big takeaway for me was when I was reading the Musk biography and we get back to the kid situation and come to find out he all along wanted to have children via nannies and be able to have help and support systems and things like this that just to be fair it's not like they're your family they're paid help that to me was where i think not that i lost respect but more of that i just started to see the reality of the situation of wow you really don't have any sort of a clue of what an average American or what an average person can actually afford or what they're capable of doing on their what what's on their focus if that makes sense if, you, if you're thinking about IVF treatments for all of your children and you're thinking about <clears throat> nannies because uh, I mean I get it I get that you have a lot going on but to put it into perspective, an IVF treatment is $20,000. One. One shot. That's a lot of money to, a lot, to most people. And I think when you look at it from that perspective, I mean, when we're talking about $30,000 Teslas and just getting one treatment or one chance to have a kid is twenty grand, I think that's unreachable or unattainable for most people. And I, I get it. I'll give you an example of how I lost touch with reality at, <clears throat> in my life. I was recently at REI buying a jacket. <laughs> Great jacket. Really like it. Nice. It just fits well. It's full zip, putty, whatever. Beside the point. I tried it on. It was from a brand I'm familiar with. And didn't even think twice about it. Maybe it was because it was a brand I was familiar with, so obviously thinking of what the price point would be in that brand. But to be fair with you, <laughs> I didn't think twice. It was, I, I looked at the price tag, thought it was fine, not a big deal, went to the register, and ironically enough, actually bought two of them. I bought a different color. I think that's a small way of giving a personal example of how we do lose touch with reality of what people's day-to-day -day lives are like. But I don't think it's acceptable <clears throat> to, and, and this is where I think it's fine to lose touch with reality. But where it's not fine to lose touch with reality is where you lose touch with reality and reality and then go and tell others the way that they should live based off of your methodologies. I don't think that's fair in a society. It's kind of like electric vehicles. If you choose to drive a gas car the rest of your life, you are not going to offend me. 
In fact, can I take a ride in one of them? Because I don't own one anymore. And I don't judge you for that. I realize that change is hard and change is very slow. But I also think at the same point in time, I'm not going to tell you and beat it from the rooftops that you should get an electric vehicle. I, if you want to know about it, I'll answer any question you have. But, if you, but I'm not going to go around preaching it. I'm sorry. Kind of like other things in the world, I don't need to tell you about the... <laughs> you know the religion I'm talking about. I hope that, I mean, we can talk more at length about my thoughts on Elon. Maybe comment down in the comments below what you guys want to know of how, how, what I think about it. I've read the biography twice. If, if you want my personal side of it, my personal side is I was really supportive of Musk. I was really critical of Musk and again, now doing this and being able to do these coffee talks, I'm, I'm, I'm in the middle. Politics, don't agree with that at all. Product, it's an amazing product. I mean, it's kind of like when Steve Jobs back in the day, that's kind of how I relate it to. I remember when stories were coming out about purchasing iPhones back in the day and they were being manufactured at Foxconn and you heard all of these stories and rumors of people committing suicide and I'm sure it was I'm sure some of them were probably true. I'm not negating that. But I think it missed the point of what was to come as far as making things more accessible, making things, it just, I think we all know how the outcome of that event turned out, which was that Apple's a great company and they make fantastic products that a lot of us actually use in our day-to-day -day lives. Same thing with Tim Cook. I remember back in the day when Steve Jobs was very harsh on his individuals and the employees that he hired and I remember people saying back then, how can you support an Apple product because of Steve? Well, I support the product because I liked using an iPhone and I thought it was the best device at the time and I still think that that's true today. <laughs> Small short plug for Apple. But I remember also being one that was critical back in the day when Steve died and said the innovation died with Steve. And I was 100% wrong. Tim Cook has done more for Apple than I think Steve did in his tenure. And I know that that sounds, that's patting Tim on the back. Tim is an incredible CEO. And I think he's really good about focusing on, on what is important. And I think if you think about what a CEO should be, it should be about the message of the product and not about the individual and their agenda. I appreciate Musk and the companies he has developed and the people that work there because those are the true people that bring these products to life, in my opinion. Yes, you could argue that Musk provides that uh, freedom to be able to do that, which that's fair. That's 100% fair. But... I also think that as the company grows in scale, one needs to focus more on the product and try to stay less on, stay out of less of steering the, the mainstream conversation. Hard to do when you have many different companies that spread across many different industries that actually focus on, well, speech and being in the public, uh, basically the, the public narrative. It's very difficult. Steve Jobs back in the day, by the way, was one of the first CEOs that 
was people were also critical of him having more than one role. He was, as you recall, on the board at Pixar. And I can't remember if he was the CEO title there. I think he was. It was him, John Laster, and uh, the other third gentleman that I can never remember the name of. I'm sure someone in the comments will comment this. But at any rate, I find myself rambling at this point. I haven't even still sipped a sip of coffee because I was so nervous about covering the Elon Musk uh, topic on the morning coffee chat. Let me take a sip of coffee here. <clears throat> Pretty good. Uh, coffee is definitely the way to start a civilized morning. I hope, I hope this makes sense about my thoughts with Elon. If you have more questions, let's keep the conversation going. And until next time, I'll see you on the next morning coffee chats. Uh, morning coffee chat sessions.